It used to be if you wanted to escape reality, you'd sit back with a bag of popcorn and watch a do rigueur action adventure movie. But because this is 2018, apparently a political sermon is now part of the package too. So there I was on a long haul flight back to Toronto last month. I grew weary of reading, so I decided to sit back and watch that, which is known as the in-flight movie. In this case, it was Hurricane Heist, which at least scores one star when it comes to truth and advertising, given that, as the title suggests, this film is all about a heist that takes place during a hurricane. Like way too many flicks in the action-adventure realm these days, Hurricane Heist is a mindless CGI-driven vehicle that at times resembles a video game more so than an actual movie. Here's an excerpt from the trailer. Here goes nothing. You better hope not. Let's get the money. That thing wants to swallow us whole. Hell of a day, ain't it? Anyway, two of the protagonists are what you'd call good old boys from the South. They're into guns and monster trucks. They are presumably NASCAR fans and vote Republican. So it was quite jarring that in between guns a-blazing and trucks doing burnouts during a Category 5 storm, that one of those good old boys, Will Rutledge, seemingly turns into the second coming of Al Gore. This is when he explains that the increasing frequency and severity of hurricanes is caused by global warming and that, quote, with all due deference to Donald Trump, there is man-made climate change, end quote. Well, you know, folks, at a cruising altitude of 40,000 feet, <laughs> no one can hear you scream. Indeed, the statement seems so out of character that... One must wonder if this fictional construct was really channeling the political opinions of the film's director, Rob Cohen. But here's what Mr. Cohen said back in March during the publicity tour for Hurricane Heist, quote, there's probably not a human being that hates Donald Trump more than me. I have found a dark side of myself that I have never experienced because I just dream of how he can be tortured and suffer. I hate him. I hate everything he stands for, including on climate change. He's in the pocket of the oil industry. He doesn't want to hear that fossil fuels may in fact be poisoning the whole earth." End quote. His comments are beyond the pale and point to the egregious double standard that exists in Hollywood. After all, could you imagine a director committing career suicide by openly fantasizing about torturing, say, Barack Obama or Hillary Clinton? But when Cohen utters such appalling remarks regarding President Trump, he wears it like a badge of honor and his fellow progressives either collectively shrug their shoulders or they applaud. And apparently Cohen fails to grasp the profound irony about his condemnation for fossil fuels. After all, one can only imagine how many thousands of gallons of fossil fuel were required to produce hurricane heist. But again, like any proud progressive, Cohen preaches from the pulpit of do as I say, not as I do. And as Trump derangement syndrome continues, is this the new normal moving forward? The idea that even in a mindless action adventure flick, that audiences should expect to endure a pinch of progressive propaganda? You know, it reminds me of the awful 1994 Steven Seagal flick, On Deadly Ground. Now, the vast majority of On Deadly Ground is exactly the sort of stuff you'd expect from a Steven Seagal flick. People getting beaten up and things getting blowed up real good. And then at the very end, a four minute long epilogue is tacked on. One in which Seagal delivers a sermon directed at the audience that sports numerous loony conspiracy theories pertaining to the environment. It is by far the best part of the movie, actually, because when it comes to comedy, in my book, nothing is funnier than unintentional humor, and Seagal's speech is so over-the-top unintentionally funny that when I saw this film in a theater some 24 years ago, the, the audience was actually howling with laughter, which I can assure you folks was not the intended effect. Check out an excerpt. I'd like to start out by saying thank you to all the brothers and sisters that have come here today representing this cause. I've been asked by Mr. Etok and the Tribal Council to speak to you and the members of the press about the injustice that's been brought against us by some government officials and big business. 
How many of you out there have heard of alternative engines? Engines that can run on anything from alcohol to garbage or water. Or carburetors that can get hundreds of miles to the gallon. Or electric or magnetic engines that can practically run forever. You don't know about them because if they were to come into use, they put the oil companies out of business. The concept of the internal combustion engine has been obsolete for over 50 years. But because of the oil cartels and corrupt government regulation, we and the rest of the world have been forced to use gasoline for over 100 years. Big business is primarily responsible for destroying the water we drink, the air we breathe, and the food we eat. Yikes! This sermon actually drones on for another three minutes. I mean, come on, Seagal, shut the hell up and drop kick somebody already, will you? Moving forward, my advice to filmmakers is simple. Can you kindly leave progressive politics out of action adventure flicks? You want to get preachy? Then make a documentary. In the meantime, stop being such inconvenient goofs. For the Rebel.media, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, the Rebel has a new app. Please download that app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.